So this is a complete build video where we start off from a bare chassis and we built it up to the truck that we see today. If you want to see the full 10 part build series, I'm going to put a link to that up here. This video is kind of condensed down into sort of like a couple of hours. So I've been obsessed with monster trucks ever since I was a little kid. And in 2014, I went to the Monster Jam World Finals in Las Vegas. And once I see these trucks for the first time in the flesh, it was at that moment that I decided I had to build my own truck. So here we've got the first part of the build arriving and probably the most important part of the build, the chassis. So this is a CRD chassis, the same chassis that many of the Monster Jam trucks use. So here it is, freshly delivered. Here we've got a few parts that come with it, bumper, Lexan, roof, engine mounts. <laughs> oh my god! He's cuddling it already. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Give it a kiss, Kev. First to come off are the axles. Now these weigh one ton each. They cost $40,000 each. And I've had these custom made to be a little bit wider than a normal monster truck. Right, I'll go straight in with them. Where you want it? Yeah, there. So here we've got the body and this is a Chevy C10. So here we've got the tyres, these are 66 inches tall, 44 inches wide and this is what makes it a monster truck. So in this shipment we have nearly everything that we need to finish this monster truck. The last time I was excited is when I got that man away. Oh ho ho ho! Oh ho oh, oh, ho! Oh, <laughs> he nearly oh, fell off then! Oh, oh. <laughs> you ready? You ready? You ready? Look at him! Uh, well, I don't know what that is. <laughs> hey, Ian, any idea what that is? One for one. Uh, it's solenoid. a solenoid. It's a solenoid. No idea where it goes. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, there it is. Is that instruction manual? Instruction manual for your rear steer, Kev. Ah. Oh. What's that? How are we, how are we gonna build this? Uh, what? what is it? Well it's got tank written on it. Yeah, no, I know. Oh I know, this is a hydraulic tank. I think that's all to do with your rear steer, Kev. Here somewhere. <laughs> Here's a body mount. This is my little rear steer little body mount. That's all stuff we got to weld. Oh, I know what these are. These are sway bars. Oh, it's Christmas every day. Look at that. Look at that. That's a piece of work. I know where these go. You haven't stopped smiling yet today. <laughs> Pine joints, they call it in the States. We call it rose joints or rod ends over here. It's surprising that that actually holds the axle on, isn't it? That's the first box. It doesn't weigh anything. I think these are exhaust. Oh, gauges. Oh, wow. Cables. All oh, those little bits. Brake cylinder, probably. Got monster truck. Harness bag eight. I think it's all pre made. Look at that. <laughs> I bet it's going to be heavy. I don't know what a jack shaft is. <laughs> I know it's part of this, though. <laughs> I think it's this. So here we've got the transfer box. Nuts and bolts. Oh, that's the cage. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. There's a rotor. I'm guessing it's something to do with the centre drive shaft. Ah, oh, so that's a rotor. That bolts into the axle somewhere. somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I think it goes on like that. Oh, we're in. The first part of the build. <laughs> oh, we're on. It's actually on. I thought it was going to be hard. <laughs> so here we've got the four link bars that hold the axles on. Every fun leg there. Ready! <laughs> Next, we put the axles into position, ready to mount them. Hey, we're on. So far, everything is coming together very easily. Oh, that's, that's, that's almost exactly the right place, isn't it? Get rid of the skinny. Next, the front axle. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Look at that! So these small wheels are just here for working on it and for transporting it. Next, it's time to mount the shocks. The fronts are 26 inch travel, the rears are 30 inch travel. Yeah, oh. Oh, right, hang on. If you lean on the front. 
Ayo, 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 So here we got the sway bars. Basically, what a sway bar does is stops a car from leaning too much. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at that. This is the radiator for the engine coolant. Might be a shock off job. It is a shock off job. When in doubt, give it a clap. So. <laughs> so here we got the transmission coolers because these gearboxes get hot. Here we got the fuel tank. Here we've got the brake pedal assembly. Now it's time to put the body on. Ah, <laughs> oh, that looks so cool. So somehow we got to get that onto there. No idea what we're doing here, guys, but I suppose we've got to figure it out somehow. So, do these come off? Oh, yes, so we're professionals. I hope we're doing it right, guys. Too easy. Hey, what are you doing, Stem? Just having a bit of fun. This is the one, man. Best cool going, that is. Look how easy that is. And then that's where we put the Lexan panel on, and then it gets held on with these little Zeus clips like that. Let's get a little bit of grease on there so you guys don't tell me off. Then we can get one of these nuts on there. And the rod end, a rose joint, time joint, or whatever you want to call it. A bit more grease. Nuttage. Heim. So this here is the dry shaft safety loop. It goes around the outside of this and in case this blows up or something, it stops it all flying out and getting the crowd. Got the front one there ready as well, look. Next, we need to get this thingamajig here and bolt it onto that. I suppose we better put a bit of grease on there. And a bit of lock tight. And then we've got to get another one onto the front here on the transfer case. The engine sits in there, transmission goes there, and then the main transmission turns this shaft here in the transfer box, and that's got a load of gears in there that puts the power down into here. So there you go, that's spinning around there. And if we look on the other end, that one there's spinning too. And then this draft shaft here connects this to the axle there. It's pretty much exactly the same as an RC car. Postman! Oh, it's Christmas every day! Oh yes, guys, I've been waiting for these now. We can bolt on that bearing block there, and now we can get all of this lot on. Somehow we've got to try and figure out how. Just look at the quality of these parts, guys. So next, I think we've got to get this piece here onto there. So this has got to come off here, I think. And now we've got to fit it onto here.
hopefully I did it right. It looks good to me. Oh, I just put some flush. Ish. So here we're just making a few plates to hold the body together. So we've got the body all mounted on now. We've got it perfect in the right place. And next, we've got to weld these little tubes in and hopefully it's going to be in the right place. Oh, yeah, Fasha. Oh, shit, got fire. <laughs> so there we go, we've got the start of the front body mount made and next we've got to work on this one here. So we've cut these tubes here, so we're just going to weld that onto there, then that onto there. Next, we've got to curve the plate to fit the body. That'll do, it's only a toy. again and have a go fit in the interior. No idea what we're doing, but we're going to try and make it up anyway. Okay. So next, we've got to make some brackets to mount the seat. Too close to here because when we try a backflip and it goes wrong, we land upside down. We need a little bit of, <laughs> need a little bit of headway. So next, I've got to get some metal so we can make the seat belt mounts and also mount the seat to the back of the frame there. And I've just fitted the water pump to the roll cage here, and then we need to get a load of tubes and stuff to pipe it all up. But we'll do that later on once the engine's in. So I'm leaving everything loose for now. Then when the build's finished, I'm going to go around it and do up all the nuts and bolts. Next, we've got to make some straps to mount the fuel tank. So for that, we're just going to use some of this flat stuff here. Look at that. Is it gonna fit? Is it gonna fit? Is it gonna fit? Oh, perfect. So that is in there. Still got to make a little bracket here just to go around that. So you've got to run these seat belts so tight that we actually want to ratchet on there. So once you've got yourself all buckled up, you just crank away on here and really Strap yourself in tight. Any movement at all in the seat could lead to injury. So uh, we gotta get that there somewhere. The old cut off. Engine controls, we can reach it there. Rear steer there. <laughs> We've got to lift the engine out of the crate. I'm scared, as soon as we lift it, it's going to try and fall over. So this is going to be sketchy. If it goes wrong, it's going to be really bad. I was going to lift it off of these. I rang up Tony from Swamp Thing. He said, no, do not lift it off of these. What did Ian say? Ian said, don't lift it off of those. <laughs> <laughs> if it falls on the floor, it's Ian's fault. 
right, it's not mine. <laughs> oh man, look at that horsepower. My So it's the 540 cubic inch engine built by Richard Midget who builds all the Monster Jam engines. It's supercharged and alcohol injected V8. It's based on a Chevy engine, but I think there's nothing on here actually Chevy. Everything is aftermarket. We've got aftermarket heads, aftermarket crank, ignition, block, alloy rods. These here are straps in case the supercharger blows off to hold it on. It's got mechanical fuel injection. And if you look here, you can see the injectors going in here. And if you look in here, you'll see them poking out just there, look. So as it sits, it's probably running around about 1500 horsepower. If we change this supercharger pulley here for a smaller one, it's gonna overdrive it, spin the supercharger faster. We can suck more air into the engine or force it in, and that should get our horsepower up to around about 2000. Over here we have the transmission. So this is based on a power glide. It's fully custom built. We've got a beefed up casing. If you haven't, if you've got a stock casing, you've got to run a blanket in case they explode. On these, they've got the heavy duty casing anyway, so you don't have to. There's the torque converter. We've got the flywheel up here, which weighs like literally nothing. So next, we've got to get the helmet off. So there's a couple of screws in here that were really hard to get to. Got to make a special little spanner to get in there and take them off. And next, we've got to take these ones off. A couple of fuel pipes and the whole thing, hopefully, will lift off. You know what that looks like? It looks like a shredder. You know them shredder videos? Yeah, oh, I love them. So what Ian is removing the other day. Kevin's drinking tea. <laughs> So there's only millimeters to spare all the way around, and the novice forklift driver did not put a scratch in it anywhere. Oh Jesus, that's so tight! <laughs> Concentration on his face, he's got a proper serious look on his face. <laughs> <laughs> and next we've got some little screws in here that are absolute pig to get to so we made this back in the hole next we've got to fit the fuel pump assembly onto the engine So here we're attaching the fuel hoses. Oh, we can get these on. So there we go, we've got the front ones on. The idea with these is, is to limit the travel of the shocks. Because if you haven't got these and the shocks get to their full travel, there's a piston inside here. It's only held on with a little bolt or a nut or something. And it can easily get ripped off. This protects it. And next, I'm gonna put the back ones on. And the rear ones are slightly longer because we've got longer travel shocks on the back. Boom, there we go, the back ones are on there. We've got all these clamps here, look, that clamp onto the roll cage. The idea with these is, is that we can mount all our instruments, the switches, the gauges and everything onto these. And then it's not welded to the roll cage and we can always take it off, we can move it and I'd rather do it that way than to weld everything directly onto the roll cage. So we've got to find somewhere for this to go. I'm thinking probably here or 
I don't know. We've got the rear steer handle that goes here. So the front steering on a monster truck, on a normal steering wheel, just like on a normal car. Rear steer is a little switch that goes into here and that's the left and right for the rear wheels. So I've got a couple of these clamps on here. We're gonna put a tube on there and then weld that onto there. But what we do have to be careful with is that a lot of the vision when you're looking out the window of a monster truck, you can't see that much over the bonnet or the hood for you Americans. So a lot of the vision actually goes through the floors here. So we don't really want to obstruct it with any gauges or anything. So we've got to try and put everything in the blind spot. So we've just joined two clamps together just to make the whole thing a little bit more secure. We're holding on to this thing for dear life. We don't want it moving about. So there we go, got this piece all welded up so we can bolt this now onto the roll cage. So here we've got the rear steer switch, so that slots into there. I think it just wedges in, I think. And then you've got your rear steer like that. And then we've got this other switch that we have to put into here. And this one is so you can turn off the self-centre. With it one way, the steering will automatically self-centre. When you flick it the other way, it will stay wherever you leave the steering. We've still got to get all this lot powder coated, but for now we just want to assemble it all, make sure that everything works, and we'll take everything off, get it all powder coated, and then put it all back together again. That is solid. That is not going anywhere. Next, we've got to mount the shifter. <laughs> So we've just tacked it on for now. We're gonna put it on first, see how it all fits. And then later on when we're happy, then we're gonna weld it up fully. So now we've got to get this shifter in position and we've got to get it in just the right place. So I've taken the shifter back out again. We've got it all tacked up for now. We're not gonna fully weld it just yet, just in case we've got to move it. On the monster truck, you have to wire it up that you can only start it when you're in neutral or in park. So we've got this little sensor here that we've got to fit in there. There's a little, little ball valve on there, look and these little rollers on there to sort of push onto it. And that will just break the circuit to the starter motor so that it don't start, I think. I don't know, probably got it wrong. So next, we've got this cable here that comes out of the shifter and we've got to mount it here onto the transmission. So we've got this little bracket there that bolts on there. Then we've got this little bracket there that bolts that on. We've got to change this thing, whatever it's called, and put that onto there, that onto there, and make sure that it works, make sure we can get all the gears and everything. And then we're going to take it back off again so we can fit it, because otherwise we'd have to do all this when it's inside the truck and it's easier to do it in there. Blah. So it comes with a longer screw, a spring washer, and we just bolt it back on. <laughs> oh, look at this, guys. I found an RC car part. <laughs> So now we've got to set this up. I'm not really fully sure how. I think this is parked. So I think we've got, that's first, second, neutral, reverse, park. So then if we put this into park, which I think is, hmm. So then we put that on there and then that on there to hold the cable. So now I watched this on Tony Swamp Things channel. So I learned something, you adjust that until it falls in there easily. RC body clip in, lock that up, we're gonna take it off again, so we're not gonna bother just yet. Now hopefully our gears are gonna work. Oh yes, look at that. So now we can take all this lot here off again because we've got to have it off when we fit this into the truck, but we can't fit it yet because we're still waiting on bolts. So these bolts here, they're only temporary, I've still got all some proper ones. But anyway, here you can see the ball switch. So. We're in neutral and it's pushing that down so that breaks the circuit or makes the circuit so that you can start the engine. And then you put this over into park, which is all the way over here. And then it clips into the second one, look. So in both of those two positions, you can start the engine, but when it's not in those positions, then you can't start the engine. Health and safety. Got the shifter in. Next, we've got to finish off mounting off this steering column. We've got to make a little bracket that bolts on in here. We're gonna put a bolt through here to stop it from distorting. I've also bolted these two together. We've ground a little flat on here, just so that it sits on that tube nicely. We've got a little bit more stuff to weld to. Man, I love TIG welding. There's no sparks, there's no spatter. You can make it all nice and flush. There we go, we actually made two of them. If you know why, let me know in the comments. 
So next, I'm gonna mount these switches here. So we got engine start, we got ignition, we got fuel pumps, even though we've got mechanical pumps, I don't think we need them. Cooling, lamps, so we can have headlights on there, I guess. So I've been looking at loads of pictures all over the internet, and I think I'm gonna do it a little bit like this grave digger here. So I made this piece of angle to put onto the box here, and then we can weld it onto those clamps there. So I wanna put the gauges up on top here. Here we've got all these little pod things that hold these gauges into place and we can get four of them along here. Next, we need some nuts and bolts and I ordered them on eBay. Oh, we have posts. We have nuts and voltage. We got one more, and this one's a big one. So next we've got to figure out where to mount it. I'm thinking probably there, I'm guessing. Basically you want it somewhere where you're not gonna block any vision anywhere. We want to be able to see out through the floor and out the window. So I think my eye level's about here. So next I've got to make a bigger brake pedal and bouncing around in here is easy to miss the pedal. So I'm gonna put that on there. So next, we've got to figure out how to plumb it up. So I've got all these fittings here, all these AN fittings. And I've got to figure out which fitting goes onto which component. And here we've got some smaller ones. And then these can go on here on the oil coolers for the transmission. A bigger one here, number 12 for the cooling. I've got to take all these off again to actually make the lines later on. But for now, I'm just going to put all the fittings on everywhere so I know what we've got, so I know what we need, and then we can take them off again and make up all the lines. I've got to figure out what all these threads are in here for the water pump. No idea what that is, probably BSP, I don't know. And then I've got to figure out somehow where it all goes. So looking at pictures, I think it comes out of here and then goes into the bottom of the water pump. And then out of here, I think we need a T piece or a Y piece. And then it goes somewhere and I don't know where. So I've just made up my first hose here for the oil coolers for the transmission. So next, I'm gonna have a go at making up a water hose to go from the radiator to the water pump. So we've got to wind that all the way on there until you can see that rubber hose meet that shoulder. It's tight, but it's getting there. There we go, just like that. And I've got these special jaws for the vise so I can hold the hose and the fittings. And I've got all these special spanners here so that you don't scratch the fittings. Next, we've got to put a little bit of lube on here to help it go on. Now you can get proper lube apparently, but I haven't got any. And apparently WD-40 does the same, or free my oil. We're gonna put a little bit of tape on here because we wanna make sure when we run that other fitting in there, that it doesn't all come off. And you can see it here, if it does come off, we'll see. There we go, it hasn't moved. Then just so that we know where to cut the hose, I'm just gonna put a little bit of tape on there just to mark it, then we know that that is where we cut it. Now to cut the hose, I'm gonna use these cutters here. I know a lot of people are using an angle grinder, but the trouble is with that, you can end up getting all the dust inside the line. You can blow it out, but I just like the idea of that. Beautiful. <laughs> Lovely jubbly. Beautiful. Boom. So I've just folded up this piece of metal here, a couple of notches in there, a few holes on there. So next we can bolt that on top of here like this. And then we can weld a couple of things on there. Taco can go on there. This is the RII. When you get into trouble, then they can shut you down. Beautiful. So I want to mount it here somewhere. So I've got a couple of clamps like that. We're going to fit one on there. One's already on there. Yeah, I think something like that's going to be pretty good. Yeah. 
in with there like that. Look at that, guys. That is our view. We've got the rear steer. We've got our clocks. We've got the steering. We've got all this malarkey. Tell me what all this does. <laughs> that is the cut off. So your left hand lane, right hand lane. No idea what that one is. Yeah. And then if you get in trouble, then someone remotely can shut your engine off. So here we got the fuel pickups, but on this tank, we actually want to have a fitting underneath. So we've got to drill a hole and then we can come in. we got to get all that out of there. That's all got to come out of here. It's given birth. What is it for, Kev, all that? Prevent slosh. <laughs> no, go fast, then. No, no. <laughs> Nice little deburring tool. <laughs> yeah, give a bit of zoom. Go too tight, it's only Ali threads, isn't it? I'd be surprised how much they take. Really? Oh, I think we're good. So next, we now have to cut this. So we've got to put all the foam back in. Beautiful. So here I've just made another bracket to hold the battery kill switch and the fuel pump cutoff cable. And we're gonna mount it just there. Boom! So the reason for this little cutout here is, is that when we're sitting in here, we don't want anything obstructing the wheel wells. We want to be able to see where we're going. So that cable goes all the way from that T-switch over there. And he goes down, along here, along there, along there, along there, all along there. And then it goes on here on the fuel pump. And then we've got this little collar thing here. And that screws on the end of the cable. Next, we can hook up the throttle cable. So this little bracket thing holds the throttle cable to the pedal. So we're attached on there. Got a little holder thing on there. And then we're gonna go the same route with this cable. We're gonna go along here and just follow it along next to the other cable. Same again, it clips onto this little mount thing here. Shut the catch. And this one has a little paper clip that goes through there. So I suppose if that comes off, it's gonna be bad. Then this little ball socket thing goes on here. And the trouble is, it's miles away from there. It's not gonna reach. So I think maybe the cable's gotta be on the upper position. That would bolt on there, meaning it's closer to there, which would give us more cable on the other end. There we go, fitted it on there. Now hopefully it's gonna fit and I'll just bang my head on that thing. Oh, that looks better. Look at that. I think it's better anyway. Now that bit goes onto that bit and boom, we're on. Yes. So I've just had some more fittings turned up. So this is an adapter so I can screw that into the water pump and then go over to these AN fittings. And I've also got this nice little white piece here. So we've got to get that into there, then that into the end of that. And then we've got to take a couple of hoses and then go into the engine. And that's all for the water cooling. So we've got this gasket stuff here. And I'm just going to paint a little bit of it just around the end of these fittings and I'm making the right mess of it. So we give it a couple of minutes just to go off a little bit and then we can put it together. A little bit of lock tight. So next I've got to make a hose to go from there onto there and from there onto that one over there. I'm not going to bother filming it because I've already filmed making a couple of hoses and it's exactly the same. I'll just put you back on when the hoses are ready to go on. <laughs> So there we go, we've got one hose made and that one is gonna go from there. Who put an alternator in the way? And then the other end onto here. So you've got radiator, into water pump, into the bottom there, into this piece and into that and then into the block. <laughs> Boom! And here we have our next hose that goes in here. And then we go around here and he goes on there. And then this end goes on our little white piece here. Boom! So next we're gonna make up some brake hoses.
So next, we've got to bolt it onto the caliper. We've got the union just there, look. Then we're going to go along this four-link bar, along the chassis, and then up to the brake pedal. So there we go, it goes all the way along there, along the top four-link bar, along the chassis, and then I've just put the front one in as well. And then both the cables here are running along the chassis rail here, up there, round there, and then it's coming out here. I just need to get myself a little union to put into the back of the master cylinder. So I've just had my little brake fittings turn up, and these go into the back of the cylinder, and then we can attach the brake hoses. There we go, there's two of them. Now we get the hose and attach it. Also, I just bolted on the starter motor. I didn't film it, but it's only two bolts under there to hold it on. So that engages there to the flywheel, or flex plate, as you lot keep telling me what it's really called. Here's a load of stuff from the last video that we just got back from Powder Coaters. So we've got to shove all that lot back on. But first, let's have a look to see what we got in this box. Then we're going to fit it all, and then we're going to try and start the engine. Yes. Oh, it's Christmas every day. Header tank. Another header tank. Oh, this must be the front steering pump. Yes, front power steering pump. Oh, we need this to start the engine. Yes, check it out, guys. This is the control box that starts the engine. The manifold. Oh, yes, guys. This is what we've been waiting for. These are the flywheel bolts. Some more stuff. I'll show you that in a sec. Here, we have the rear steering pump. And bits are falling off. Oh, has someone dropped it and broken it? Oh, look, these are all the parts here. But luckily, this part here, we can just buy that separately and we can see now how it all works. So this thingamajig here goes on here. And then we've got to grub screw it on. There we go, hose made. And now we've got to do the last coolant hose coming out of this Y piece, coming round and into the top of the radiator. Boom, there we go. That's the coolant system fully plumbed in and the fuel system fully plumbed in. Now all that we've got to do is get the transmission in and plumb that in. So now we can put some of this into there because that's what it says in the instructions. And you guys said you've got to put some in there first, otherwise you might kill it. Then we can put that onto there and then we can put that into the truck. But first of all, we need to get this thing off the top of here. It says in here one quart. This is one litre, so most of it, not all of it. Next, we've got to open up the transfer case, get this shaft out, and then we've got room to get the transmission in. Hopefully, we give it a little tappage on here, a bit of persuasion, and... You're holding it. Here it oh, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming! Persuasion. So these are the quick change gears. Uh, over there, I've got some different ratios, so you can gear up for long tracks and gear down for short tracks. So I think this is probably like an intermediate one. Yeah. So now, I think if we can pull this gear out, this should just slide out of there. We wallop on here. There you go. Push that shaft out. That'll do. Look at the quality of that machining! Who's feeling stronger today? <laughs> the big girl. Uh, go on in, go on in muscles. Don't drop it. You've got 10 G sitting there. Oh. <laughs> Port lift, don't trip over that. Uh, next, we need to get that onto there. Don't forget all your shaft. I will, well, hopefully something's going to come out of here. Yeah, get a bit on there. Cool. Right, so now we've got to get the rest of it in the hole. Now, now somebody's got that kettle on. <laughs> got most of it. There you go. There you go. There you go. Someone out on there like that. That's got to go on there. Right, so now what we have to do, if Ian moves his head out of the way, is we have to get this bolt, bolt it through the flywheel and onto the converter. With the washer. So now that we've got that one in, we have to turn over the engine. He doesn't like red thread lock. Oh. I'm just worried that you never get it out again. I had a few comments of people saying if you put red on there, you're never getting it out again, like ever. People obviously try doing it by hand, not with metal. Apparently, the torque setting for this is FT. 
So apparently this is FT setting. That do. Lovely jubbly. I'm not in it, so <laughs> So next, I think we've got to get that shaft back into there, located with that, and then we've got to jack the engine up and down slightly to get that perfectly in the right place. Then we can bolt these two bolts up on this side, drill the holes out, bolt the engine in permanently, and then we should be good to go. <laughs> these engine mount plates. So next, we can get the starter motor back on. So we've got to make up another couple of hoses. Boom! So these are the oil coolers for the gearbox. So now we've got to do another one. There we go, hose number two made. Boom, there we go, all on there. Here we got another goodie that turned up the other day. Here we have our Accu Sump. So the Accu Sump sits under here. So first of all, we've got to mount these brackets. Boom. Next, we have this contraption. So we've got to screw this into there, that into the Accu Sump. This is in the way, I'll take this off. So next we've got to order a pipe that goes from there into the engine somewhere and then try and figure out how to wire it all up. Oh, another one for truck delivery. Got a few more fittings turned up. Got some more tubing turned up. Next, we have a problem. This is all the wiring and this stuff absolutely terrifies me. Every time I touch electrics, it melts, catches fire. But luckily, we have Tony from Swamp Thing 4x4 coming to the rescue. We've got the main man in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin's petrified on the wiring. I cannot do it. You can do plumbing, can't you? Yeah, sort of. Well, this is the same with plumbing. Instead, you're put, instead of putting water or oil somewhere, you're putting electric. It's exactly the same. Uh, can you do it? <laughs> it's just, just in different colours. So we just need to get on the truck and just start laying wires where they go. And okay. these ones are nice and easy because they're all labelled up where they got to go. Okay. So you've done the top bit now. I've actually done a bit of wiring, look. Yeah. Hope you guys are all proud of me. Look, I'll put that on there. Just work out what the next ones are. Main problem is I didn't bring my glasses. So I, can't oh. read, I can't read what they say. <laughs> Does someone knows what they're doing. Complicated. Oh, don't say that. That means I've got no hope. All right, so then the dark green goes on there as well. Boom. Next, we've got to mount this catch tank in there. So that's for the power steering pumps and for the transmission. So any oil or whatever leaks out of there, you can catch it in here. So I've made these straps here to hold it on. I didn't bother filming it because I made them in exactly the same way as these tank straps there, which was in a previous video. Uh, there we go, we've got all that lot plumbed in there. We've still got to zip tie it up to there. But we have this rear steering pump going into it, the transmission braver, and the front steering tank. So next, we've got to mount this MSD coil box thing, whatever it's called. Just made this little plate. Didn't bother filming it because we've already filmed loads of holes. We're going to get all this stuff powder coated later on, but for now, I just want to get it, get it all mounted. There we go, all mounted on also. I've just made another bracket here, the exact same for the solenoids. Oh. Got these little pins here, quick release pins. I think it just goes in like that. All right, same on the other side. All right, boom, there we go. So just had the batteries turned up, so these are the Optima yellow tops. So we've got two of them and they go in there. Then we've got this clamp thing here to go on top. Next up, we've got to make some battery cable. So next, we've got this little crimper thing here. So you get the cable, shove him in there, just like that, and then hit it with a hammer. Just like that. Thank you. 
Oh look, we've got the hydraulic man turned up. Darren from Hydroquip. How you doing mate? Oh hey Chap, how are you? Not bad. What you got for us? Rubber hoses. Oh, <laughs> we're getting hydraulics done. We're going to measure. Yes. So we've already done a little bit. We've got a bit of the front hosing in. Look. So what we're going to do now? Yes. Go from your pump. Oh, hold on. Let me come round so we can see. We're just going to measure this for now. So I'll just pop that on there. <laughs> What's this thing going to do? Uh, that's the crimp that we're going to use. That's the one. What does that do? Just that's how tight one. the crimp is, is it, that bit? It does indeed, yeah. So what we do is, uh, we these little dies that are underneath here will get you roughly in the uh, to near the mark of what you need to crimp it to, and then just add on a little bit by the fine adjustment. Sounds the technical. Bit of grease. And we can pop that in the back. And <laughs> Now we're trying to get to 31.1, that's 31.07. Let's just do the other end. So look, we've got all the rear steel already done, look. We need to put a safety guard over the engine block in case a rod blows off and it doesn't come out and hit people. So I made a template out of cardboard, then I cut the cardboard out of stainless steel. Next we've got to drill some holes. Stainless steel is quite hard and difficult to drill. And these are the best drill bits that I have found that love drilling through stainless. Look at that, straight through. So you've got these plates all cut out now, got this bracket here made. And next we've got to weld up the kickback. So basically what this thing does here is the engine is mounted on two aluminium plates. So it can actually flex this way. So this is to limit it. So next we can get the exhaust pipe on there. So here we've got some brackets that hold on these straps. So the idea of these straps is that if the supercharger was to blow off, and it does happen sometimes, it stops it flying off and hitting someone. It's another day, we got Claire in the house, and it is the calm before the storm. What are we doing, people? They're gonna give you breaks. So tomorrow Tony's coming, and we should get it running for the first time, hopefully. So today we just gotta to go through it all, button everything up, brake fluid, oil, gearbox oil, all that stuff. Come on, lady. <laughs> Hopefully. Yes. <laughs> yes, lovely. So here we have Wilwood Racing Brake Fluid. Push pedal down by hand. Any little pumpage? Yeah, go on. We're going to fire it all out the top. Shouldn't do. Not too gentle. you got to do it on and off technique. Yeah, we're going to lock the black one off as well. Yeah, let me lock the black, black one off. Pump it up. Hold it down. Yep. Yeah. Alright, I think we might be good back here. The pedal should go rock hard. Pump it up. Yeah. So apparently we've got to fill it all the way to the top here, in reckons. But I don't know. I have no idea. We'll probably do, won't it? We have lid. Hey, hey. We have brakes. And tomorrow we're going to have acceleration. <laughs> <laughs> don't make a mess. You've got no chance with this stuff. Look, it's like glue. Oh, it's really thick. What are you doing, Claire? I'm holding your funnel. Ooh, look at that, all going in there. All that goodness. This is the right stuff, yeah? Uh, I hope so. It's going in. Look, look, look. Oh, it's black as well. <laughs> I 
<laughs> did you not? <laughs> what? No. It just what, what? Like something really dirty. What did? <laughs> the noise. Well, what, what's it remind you of? <laughs> Ah! <laughs> right, so I've just tested most of the wiring, what you've put in, and so far I haven't found a problem with it. So we've been, <laughs> dry, we've been dry testing it. Now we're on to the bit where everything is off. Touch this quickly. See that? That's a good sign there. Oh, okay. No sparkage. No sparkage. No smoke. You turn the power on at the back now, and then I'll touch it again, because at the minute nothing's connected. Right, so... Right, so that's on now. Yeah. Right, ready? Yeah, go and turn. I haven't got the battery on at the minute. Alright, we're on. Alright, so that's good. If this all goes to plan today, we're gonna to start it up. We got fanage. Yeah, getting it ready for the multinationals. <laughs> they won't be long. Where can I get tickets from? Looking good. Get them off the website. Go to santapod.com. Yes. And there's not many left. So I'm a big fire up day today then, Kev. Yeah. Can't wait. You Tony? I'm cleaning up my shoe <laughs> Drying your shoe wee. Look that makes a funny noise when you come down again. Come with them. Look my way. Alright, listen to it coming down, ready? Hydraulic gonna go everywhere. Oh, hey! Didn't do any stuff. Didn't leak it anywhere. No. It worked. <laughs> right, oh, oh I can hear. Oh, missing out of here. <laughs> oh yeah, we didn't do any of those up actually. What size is this? I only haven't done those ones up either. Wasn't that on our list of things to do this morning? No, that's on Kev's list of things to do. Yeah. It sounded like it running out of all of it. You want to keep it clean so when you work on it. Yeah. Because <laughs> you are yet to get your hands dirty. Well, I've done most of it. You didn't do any oil yesterday. I mean, he volunteered. <laughs> <laughs> he volunteered me. We don't know. Oh, it's there. It's a we. Have you got a shiwi, Tony? Yeah, I've got, I've got multi multiple shiwis. <laughs> Right, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> what I like last night, sir, mate. What you don't want is it to whip you, you see? Yeah, sound better working. Yeah. Look at that, it works. <laughs> How come it's working? I don't know, I think I want it the other way. Yeah, that's what I say. Just turn, turn, pull the switch out, turn it around, put it back in again. Fixed. Are you doing ignition on as well? No, no. Just starter. Yeah, just starter. <laughs> there you go. So just do it, so do, do it a few more times, yeah. It will eventually, but we've got to put more oil in it. We've got to do the accumulator next. So this contraption is apparently a block heater and a water heater, yeah. an oil heater. Yeah, the oil and the water at the same time. So we've got to set the rear shocks. Tony showed me how to do it last time. I, I can't remember how to do it. So now he's showing us how to do it again. Basically, we're going to set the gap in there, whatever you want it, and then we have to set the pressures in the shocks. I think we want 11 back and 10 front, I think it was, or yeah, 9 front. So we're miles too high at the minute, Get the bow, screw it on. This thing was leaking on us yesterday, so I don't know if I used it wrong or if it's... We'll check it in a minute. And then you might make sure that one's backed right the way off. So that gauge tells you how much is in the bottle. This is the one what you're actually putting in the pressure. How much are we going for? I, re I reckon you're going to put... Oh, 700 I 700 in there yesterday. No, no, you're going to be 200. <laughs> what did you put uh, in the front last time? 100, wasn't it? I think I put 100 in the front last time. Yeah, yeah. you see, it starts starting to climb. So I'll put, I'll put in 200 in the back because it's heavier. It is heavier at the back than it is at the front. Yeah. Then you just back the gauge off because it, it won't go down. If you put too much in, you've got to take that off and just get, get hold of that. And yeah, see, okay. the gauge goes down now. So 200. Back it off. Turn, turn the bottle off. So now with the 19. You want the top one in. So we're moving the truck outside just in case it decides to catch fire when we start it. 
I hear Tony's filling up the tank with methanol. And a little bit of petrol to get the engine running for the first time. Turn the power on. Go on. Uh, what, the oscillator? The oscillator, yeah. That's what you want. Yeah. So, just bump the starter. Uh, ignition off. Yeah, ignition off. Again. Again. Right, now look at the oil pressure gauge. Yeah, and then bump and bump it like for a long time. Yeah, do it again. So haven't you got like 40 psi on there now? No, should I keep going since it's on 40? Yeah, yeah. So now turn the ignition off. So here Tony's putting a bit of petrol into the intake. Alright. Press starter. Ready? Yeah. Woo! Oh, oh my god! <laughs> do it again, do it again. Oh! <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my god, that's just like that Lambo's a mouse! <laughs> again? Yeah, I'm gonna put a bit more in. I wanna go to the moon! <laughs> okay, go on in. Again. <laughs> no, not yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not yet, because the throttle's wide open. Go on then. <laughs> you want me to go? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Again? Yeah, do, yeah pull, pull the methanol now. All right. Yeah, it'll be alright, it should go now. Tony's adding more hydraulic fluid for the front steering and I'm working the steering left and right to try and bleed the system. Here we got the front steering all working now. So here Tony is topping up the transmission and I'm going through all the gears to get the fluid through the transmission and get it all working. Chief and the driver, one had thought the other one had filled it up, the other one thought the other, oh, neither of them had done it. Next, we're going to check to make sure that the battery isolator kills the engine. Yeah. And it does. Right, so turn the fuel off now. Fuel off. Yeah, and then start it back up now. What, with the fuel off? Yeah, because you basically you, you shut the engine off with the fuel going. Oh, so, 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 the, so, when the, so now when you fire it up, yeah. you fire it up, and as soon as it fires, then push the fuel on. Okay. <laughs>
my god! <laughs> Please, can I have some air defenders? <laughs> Oh man! Awesome. That can't be legal. <laughs> Those poor transport tyres, Kev. <laughs> they didn't like that. <laughs> no, I was shaking. That <laughs> <laughs> was so cool. <laughs> That's not going to be like backflipping it. <laughs> That's going to be scary, isn't it? I did say it's unlike any other vehicle, didn't I? So next, Tony is going to put it back into the shop. <laughs> Dally over there. He's got his protection on. Take it off, you're not going to hear me properly. Danny likes that. <laughs> We're going to fit the big tyres, we're going to fit the body, we're going to get the body painted, all the graphics on there, and get this truck finished. Workshop's too small, so we've got to put it outside. What we want to do, hold on, hold on. What we want to do is, we need to put the body on, then we've got to pick up the whole monster on one corner, flex it over, and then we can cut the arches. But, this is in the way, and this doesn't work. So, maybe that can make it work. <laughs> You can go for oh hang on, hang on. You can go forwards bet. Okay. That's well sketchy. <laughs> yeah. We're doing Claire. Working out where you gotta cut it. Ah, so we've got some pictures of Titan that's got the same body as me. So we're gonna well Claire's gonna, because Claire's better at this. <laughs> so you want that bit intact, don't you? Yeah. And then it comes down to here. Oh my god, that's a lot you've got to cut out of there. Is it in the middle? Uh, yeah, it's not far off. Man, I hate fiberglass. So we just roughly cut the back one. So next we're going to jack it up, get the big wheels on, see how it lines up and then do whatever Claire says. <laughs> I'm the boss, am I? <laughs> right, so next magic trick. Right, ready, ready, ready. Boom! <laughs> that was easy, wasn't it? <laughs> Alright, next one. Ready? Yeah. Oh my God, look! Look, at look, look! Look at the size of it! <laughs> what? <laughs> so we've got to do a bit more cutting on the body work, we've got to do it the other side. And then we've got to take it down to Tony's, get it painted, stickers. Oh my god, that is the size it's gonna be, man. <laughs> just moved on that tyre. The idea of flexing it so we can see what the full travel is. But it feels unstable. Mm, we're gonna try and let the shocks down. Death by monster truck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm the one that's got to get under it. Your, your monster truck. truck. <laughs> <laughs> what <are> we got? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to take a lot more. So now, hopefully it's going to work, we put some more pressure in the shocks and that's going to give this side maximum travel, the other side maximum down, and then we can cut our arches out, or the fenders. So I just cut a little bit out of here, I didn't really want to cut any of this off really, because we're going to harm the face, but we've got no choice, it's either that or moving the body further forward, and if we move the body further forward, that's going to hit when we do moonwalks, like the nose wheelies. So anyway, next we've got to steer it, to see how far we can actually steer. So Ian's donated 
volunteered to get in. Go on, shot us. Right. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get the more difficult job of jacking it up. Steer. Oh. oh. <laughs> Maybe a tiny bit more. If we keep it on that line, that'll be all right. <laughs> So the bit we're trucking away is actually bigger than the bit that we're keeping. So next we're going to let the gas out the shocks, we're going to get the truck back down again, put the rest of the body panels on, hopefully it's all going to line up. And hopefully I'm not going to kill myself. This one might be more spectacular. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Are you sure you haven't done those valves? Oh, there it goes. Right back. <laughs> You'll face it. So now with the truck on the bump stops, we can reattach the sway bars. Ready, go up. So that should be our sway bar set perfectly. Still looks good, doesn't it? <laughs> it always looks better slam, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> So there we go, that is the body fully mounted now. Suspension's all the way down, so it's got to go up again. I reckon it looks so fat like this. So next we've got to put the small wheels back on, take the body off, take the body down to Tony's. Tony's going to paint it. Ash is making the vinyl stickers for it. Got it all back in the shop again with its little baby wheels on there. We've got a little bit of wiring to do on the monster, and we have the man in the house. So that is a taco we got to get working, and we got what we got, Craig. We got wires. We got some information there, and we got to get that information to make sure they get the right bits in there. And then, is it going to work? Of course, it's going to work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right, so temporarily we've got it all wired into the loom. So hopefully, well, Craig over there reckons it's going to work. Of course it is. Of course it is, he says. If you're not confident, it'll never work. So we've got the old block heater plugged in. We've got the engine warming up. So 45 minutes on that. We're going to give it a quick little fire up and to see if it works. Vinny is a designated driver. Put the ignition on. That's uh, it. And that's loud. My eyes hurt. My ears hurt. Yes. So we are off to Tony's from Swamp Thing 4x4. He's gonna make a mold of this body actually, so when we break our body, he can make us a new body. Then he's gonna paint it and get all the stickers on there. Here we are on Tony's location. Wow, we. There's some big cuts in there. Really busy I am, look. <laughs> Get the heavy bit. Not a really heavy bit. Oh. <laughs> so while Tony's painting the body, we've got a few more jobs to get on with. So all the wiring is now fully done. And look, we've hidden it all away to make it all nice and neat and nice and tidy. All this mess under here, look. All nicely tidied up, up here. We've sorted all these cables out. We've got the taco working. So, just been doing a little bit of work off camera. So I've put in a handheld fire extinguisher here. And also I've started to plumb in a plumbed in system. So you pull the handle here and it sets this thing off here. Now we've got some nozzles. So we've got a couple of nozzles on here that go over the engine. We've got one there that goes over me and another one over there that goes over me and one there that goes over the transmission. And then coming around here, I've made a guard for the supercharger because you have to have this to protect the fuel lines. In case that belt breaks, you don't want the fuel lines getting ripped off. Just had all this stuff here come back from powder coaters. So we've got to put some of it back on. So here we've got an engine stabiliser. 
So I'm going to put that back on. Actually, off camera. Hold on, let me put the torch on. I made this guard here to go around the flywheel. Some more bits here. Come back from powder coaters to hold this tank on. So let's get it all fitted. Then head over to Tony. Get the body. Get the body fitted. And then, guys, it's going to be time to test the truck out properly. Yes. Guys, we're pretty much finished now. We've just got to wait to get the body back from Tony. But off camera, I made these little brackets here to hold the seat shoulder pads onto the head pad things. We zip tied everything down to stop everything from moving about. And all a bit of zip tied under there, just holding up all the hoses and cables everywhere to keep them out of Tom's way. Right, let's head off to Tony's, pick up the body. Hopefully he's gonna give us a little guided tour of his Swamp Thing workshop. Uh, then we're gonna bring the body back, fit it, and then next video, it's going to be our first little proper drive. We are on our way to Tony's Swamping 404. Can't wait to see his body. I've seen the Facebook pictures. Oh man, it looks so good. Can't wait to see it on the truck. But he hasn't got the stickers on there yet. So we're going to get the body back with no stickers. And then Sticker Man's going to come to the workshop and put the stickers on then. So the grand unveiling of the name and what all the artwork's going to be is going to be at the UK Monster Truck Nationals in Santa Pod, so make sure you're going to be there. We're going to miss it. The Talbot Pub. Hey, here we are in Tony's shop. Hey. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at this. Here's the front end. So this is going to go chrome, actually, but the stickers are not going on it just yet. So test day is going to be like that. And then we're going to sticker it up for the main day. What do you reckon of it, though? I reckon it looks amazing. <laughs> Ferrari Rosso Corsa. Because when you was on about the red, I said, you've got to pick a nice one because some of them look a bit orangey. Yeah, there's definitely no orange in that. No. I reckon you should give us a little guided tour of your Swamp Thing man cave. Uh, yeah, so this is, this is me. Uh, normally, I've got the tractor unit on the front, but that's just up the end at the minute. So this is my trailer, uh, which I used to take my monster truck from show to show. Yeah. Uh, we'll take you in that in a minute, but Ooh. this is where I do all the, like, the fabricating with metal is in this part of it here. I saw that on your video actually when you was making these things. Yeah, so there's steering knuckles. This is what I break a lot of at a minute. Oh. These, these are the half shafts, so that, that there's a little yeah. pin in there. You can dot that out and that piece will come out. <laughs> so guys, Tony's gonna give, it, give us a quick guided tour, but if you wanna see anything in great detail, Tony's got a YouTube channel as well, and we're gonna put a link to that down below. Check it out. Yeah. He shows loads, how to make bodies, diffs, everything. Yeah, yeah, so like, this is bits of my monster truck that I've broken. <laughs> there's, a, there's another monster truck up there, look. Who has a monster truck up on the shelf in their workshop? Oh, who? <laughs> <laughs> is that Swamp Thing 2.0? Yeah, so it's, it's almost the same. The design of the chassis is a little bit different at the bottom, but yeah, it's a slightly longer wheelbase on that one. Did you make that chassis, or...? Um, it was originally made by somebody else. Yeah, and, and you modified I, I, it. And I modified it a lot. The only thing I'm probably going to do on it is I'm going to chop off the front of it again and make the front shorter so you could do a nose wheel. Ah, yes. <laughs> um, the problem with Swamp Thing at the moment, if I try to do a nose wheelie with that, where, yeah. where the wheels are on it, yeah. the chassis comes out too far out the front of it. And it dig will, in. It will dig in the ground. Yeah. Yeah, look, so, the tyres everywhere, look. Yeah, I've got lots of tyres. Six ply, good years. That's got some cleatage. Yeah. Oh, now we've got, now we've got itchiness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my workshop isn't dust-free, especially in a minute after doing your stuff. I think I've got a fiberglass allergy. Every time I touch fiberglass, everything goes itchy. Yeah, uh, so yeah, so there's more 66s there. Yeah, oh, this thing, that's actually on your channel as well, isn't it? Yeah, this is my daughter's car. She's building this. So this was a, an old London taxi. Yeah. Which we're turning into a, a 1932 hot rod. Yeah, so V8 engine. Yeah. A lot of work's gone into this. I'm really enjoying that build series. Yeah. So if you want to see that in more detail, Tony's channel. Yeah, the welders I use, so I've got a TIG. Oh, um, that looks a lot more professional than what we've got. <laughs> Mine are like some little Banggood specials, what I use. These are like proper boys. Yeah, so and then you've got plasma cutter on the top there. That actually looks a bit like my TIG welder. I've actually got a part weld TIG welder. Yeah, so, yeah, so my lorry, all the spares are in the bottom. 
I'm gonna to have to build all this eventually. Yeah, so these are all the parts in there. So you got like the prop shafts, half shafts. That looks like the thing that I just made. Yeah, that is, that's what sets up the suspension. Yeah. Um, all of that, some bolts, brake pads, everything in there, gazebo. Yeah. So we've got the shop. Have you done a video actually where you've done a whole tour of your trailer? No, I haven't. I think you should. Oh yeah. Because <laughs> actually I'm really intrigued by it. What's in there? That's the exhaust for the generator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So you built this, didn't you? Yeah, everything on this is filled up. There's no yeah. spare bits. There's of... spares in there as well, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, spares all the way across here, spare winches. So these are the guys, the VK Graphics. They wrapped this whole entire trailer. But these are all parts of monster trucks. So these are all the broken bits, but there's still good bits in there. These exhaust systems, shop exhaust. That is <laughs> No, they're, they're off a... a... Legend? No, 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 these are off a 4x4. Four four. And this is where I do all the fiberglass in the Oh, room. the itchy room. I've seen quite a lot of this this room here in the video, in your videos recently. Yeah, so there's, there's the front bumper. Oh yeah. When we start off with fiberglass, we just start off with that. This is all the resin that's in there. That's all the chop, chop mats. That's oh, thick one. that gives me anxiety looking at that. Oh, look at all the dust coming out. Look at the camera, look. <laughs> that shows it more. Because <laughs> you've got the torch on, haven't you? More tires. More tires, yeah. I've got a fair few tires. Let's evacuate the torture chamber. <laughs> <laughs> you getting itchy now. Yes, just looking at it. <laughs> the other good thing about the trainer is, so on, the, in, on there, that's where the gas bottle is. Yeah. There's a water tank across here. All the electrics are there. In the top is the air conditioning, because you've got air conditioning in your trailer. Oh. You coming? Yeah, yeah, we're coming. There's the monster truck in Oh, there. there's Swamp Thing, look. Oh, you got headlights in it as well. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it all fits in. So the tires are at the back and there's all the, all the spares and everything are all around, the, like my toolboxes are all around the side. Yeah, so you got the tires all the way over there. Yeah. All the way back there, we zoom right in. Going so, they, up all they, so they stack on one on top of the other, on the other. Where do you sleep? Sleep this way. Woo! <laughs> so yeah, so this is a little oh, accommodation. Bedroom. So that's a bedroom up there. This makes it into a bed as well. Yeah. And um, that moves that way, doesn't it? Everything moves, even the floor. Yeah. So when the monster truck's out, all this slides back to make the room. The, the living room is 21 foot long when the monster truck's out. Oh, well, yeah. So, that's, so all this is like all the way over there. Yeah, everything. But you can still use it like that. But yeah. Across, across the end, the end of it, bar from across the end. And toilet and shower and that in here. Oh, look at that. Hello! Man, this is posh, and you built all this yourself? Yeah. Is there anything you can't build? Uh, gearboxes. Oh, oh <laughs> I'm jealous. I'm a little bit jealous. So that is the mould that Tony made us. So when I break my one, hopefully not anytime soon, then Tony can make me more. And you put all the stuff on the inside, but you have to check out Tony's channel if you want to see how it's done. Who would call a car dealership that? <laughs> he obviously did. Boom, we have arrived and Vinny is going to help us lift it on. Oh, that looks rubbish. Ah! That looks well good, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. No cameraman, but we have got a tripod. <laughs> Guys, that looks so good already. So next, we've got a bolt on these bits that we powder coated onto there. And then we can put the front end on, bedsides back. Waffle, waffle, waffle. There we go, all mounted up. We're going to be putting the big wheels on it. We're taking it to Santa Pod to learn how to drive it, hopefully not destroy it. And then we got our first show. August, I think 21 it is. You came on to Truck Nationals. This is it, guys. First proper driver of the monster truck. We've got the block heater on there on the minute. We've got that on there for half an hour. And then that warms the engine up and it should make it easier to start. Here we got go and stop. Front steering, rear steering, and first, second gear, and reverse. I really can't see it being any different than a giant RC car. Um, I'll be happy when it's on there. How much room have we got on there? Yeah, we, you're all right. How much? Uh, a couple of inches. Oh. <laughs> Is that all we got? Two inches either side? 
Uh, inch and a half. Really? <laughs> <laughs> inch and a half, there's loads of room. Get it overdone with. Loads of room. location and look we got tony's front thing in the house again <laughs> you can see what's in here now this time so we're going to be using hopefully tony's jack today if we're allowed to are we allowed yeah yeah that's why that's this out now <laughs> <It's so cool. laughs> oh look ian and claire in the house as well <laughs> and we've got podzilla gary in the house as well oh, look manual labor <laughs> Go on then, Kev, let's see you do it. Go on, Kev. So here Tony's made these handy rollers to help get the tyres off. It's got to be an easier way. Right, you ready? So here they are setting up some jumps so I can learn how to jump it. Ian is pumping up the tyres and putting some methanol into the fuel tank. Oh, you're making a mess. Engine is a big block blown and alcohol injected Chevy running around about 1500 horses. I'm putting on my safety gear and a massive thanks to Gary Anderson, driver of the Podzilla Monster Truck, for helping me to get it all on safely. Today, I would suggest does it now because they need the practice as yeah. well. Yeah. So, are you going to be doing this every time or am I? Well, it's probably stamp collecting would have been a lot easier, wouldn't it? Yeah, but that's boring. Yeah. <laughs> you're on centre, yeah. So, when, when, you, when you're happy, hold both hands up. Then you'll turn me off. Yeah. <laughs> So here Tony just hit the remote kill switch to make sure that he can kill the engine remotely. So when you're all strapped in these things you cannot see anything behind you at all. So Ian and I both have to learn what all the hand signals are so that Ian can back me up. Here, I am discovering my first problem. This monster truck's got a front differential locker. So when you're driving slowly, 
it's almost impossible to turn the steering wheel. Here, I am trying with all my energy to steer the steering wheel and it will not steer at all. Oh yes, get used to that. That's what I'm saying, having a locker in, it is not very nice. It makes the steering really heavy. Well, it's always moving, but it's going slow, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Like, you you have, you, to, to do a turn with it, you have to be doing five, five to ten miles an hour yeah. to even get it to turn. That's what I'm saying, but having a lock, that's why I took a locker out of mine. I kind of learnt that by revving the engine a little bit, you unwind the differential and also it gives it probably a little bit more pressure for the steering pump. So now with all the manoeuvring practice out of the way, it's time to drive the truck around a little bit just to get a feel for it. And I've got a little bit carried away too soon. Um, just to have a drive around and make sure everything's working, all your oil pressure, all your water temperatures, yeah. all that's coming up. The way your breathers are set up when you're doing a donut is just firing oil out. It's mostly the way they, you've got them set up on it. It's just it's pouring oil out when you're doing it. If you look how much oil's come out of it now. Oh no, I've had to all crease free. Now it's a mess. I'll go and get some granules and put some granules on that and we'll have a look. Because when you was doing it, it was, it was pouring out. Was it? Yeah. Oh. It's now time to learn how to jump it. Come, go backwards, come yeah. up to the ramp and drive with the wheels on the ramp, but don't drive over the top. Right. And then go back. Well, and then back. back. And then you can do a jump. So when you approach a jump, you completely lose vision of it as you get closer to it. So here, I'm doing a couple of little test run-ups to it, I'm stopping on the ramp just to make sure that I can line it up properly. Here we go, first ever jump in a monster truck. I was actually really surprised how soft the landing felt. I was expecting it to be a lot more violent. It felt almost like landing on a pillow. So now, same again, but this time, instead of the concrete block, we got some cars. So a couple of little lineups like this, then we're gonna go for it. Trouble is, with these BKT tires, they puncture really easily on cars. So I was quite worried, actually. <laughs> Just 
like on an RC car, I gave it a little bit of throttle in the air to try and bring the nose up a little bit. But trouble is, I've maybe done a little bit too much because landing on power is a bad idea. <laughs> so here, they sent me out a couple of cones to simulate a racing lane at the UK Monster Truck Nationals. Trouble is, with my locked up differential, it was not making the turn. Nope, there is no way I'm making it around that bend. And we have a problem, steam is coming out the engine. So they remotely shut off my engine. Something's getting off. It is water coming out something or other because there's, there's stuff everywhere. Oh, it's all oh, over the all over the tire as well. Fan's not on. You turn the fan on. Yeah. Wait, what? I think I did anyway. Oh, it's, <laughs> something's really hot. <laughs> uh, the water temperature is at 220. That's what oh, so it's 230. It's that's steam. That's, that's not smoke. Yeah. That's what's really hot. Yeah, it's definitely steam. Maybe didn't have the fans on that. One. It turns out I forgot to turn on the radiator fan and the water pump, so we overheated it a little bit. Oh man, that was so much fun. I can't wait to do it again. We're coming back in August for the UK Monster Truck Nationals. Russ is putting it on. Yeah, well it's... the training's all done now. It's all training's for real. all done. When you get back here, the bank's going to be packed, the grandstands are going to be packed. You're going to be one of the stars <laughs> of the show. I can't can't wait. wait, mate. You did great. <laughs> well done. Oh, what do you reckon, guys? Should we do it? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Can't do Andy the Landy. No. No. Come right. on then, let's get it broken down. And out of here. <laughs> all right, wheels off and home. There we go, got it all back in the shop. Driving it and the whole experience was pretty much exactly how I was expecting it to be but it, it felt a lot softer. I was expecting the landings to be a lot, lot rougher, but we got a lot of suspension travel. We got all that rubber on the tires. It was just like landing on a pillow. Now, when we start jumping it a lot higher, then I'm expecting it to get a little bit more violent. Now, one little problem that we did have was the steering. Because we've got a differential locker in there, it makes it very hard to steer at slow speeds. The steering wheel locks up solid and I'm forcing it as hard as I can and it just won't move. If I start revving it a little bit, it unwinds the diff and probably gives the pump a little bit more pressure. I don't know, then it kind of steers. But something I want to look at, I've been chatting to Marty Garza and Joshua Yoho from Monster Jam um, about how to get the steering a little bit better. And hopefully we're going to have a solution for that. So next time when we drive it, it's going to steer a lot nicer. The other alternative is, is to take out the front locker and put in a, just a normal diff. But um, I don't really want to, I like the locker. We need to slightly limit the front suspension travel. So these are the limit straps here. And I think if we just move them up a couple of holes, that's going to do it. If we look down here, See the drive shaft? It's been slightly rubbing just up here, look, on full droop. So we need to just limit that just a little bit. Or we could just notch a little bit out here, maybe. We'll see. On the rear, however, I think we need more droop. Looking at that video, you could just see that the back suspension didn't come out all the way. I've been chatting to a couple of people and they reckon I definitely need more suspension travel because it was giving it that bounce on the landing. So I think we're going to have to measure it all up and get some longer straps to go onto the back. Once we've done that, if it still lands a bit bouncy, we're going to have to play about with the shock valving inside it. We had a couple of leaks, so this union here was dripping coolant and the way that I've done my breather system, but when you're doing donuts or wheelies and moonwalks or whatever, oil can come out of here and it's gonna come flooding out of the bottom here. So when we was doing that donut, that's actually what's happening. It lost quite a lot of oil. So I think I'm gonna swap these over again and have this fit in on this side. I've noticed this pipe here has come loose on the front power steering and um, to stop it happening in future, I've probably got to zip tie that onto there. All in all, what a day. It was pretty much exactly what I expected. Uh, we got the UK Monster Truck Nationals coming up in August. Um, been chatting a little bit with Monster Jam on the possibility of taking apart on some of the European Monster Jam. So let me know in the comments if you want to see that. I want to say a massive thank you to Gary Anderson for helping out on the day. He was sort of showing me how to strap in properly and giving us loads of tips and tricks. Massive thanks to Trevor and Scott for coming over and looking over all the safety stuff and giving me pointers and making sure the, the truck's safe and making sure that I'm safe. Tony from Swamp Thing 4x4 who's come over and given me so much help getting this truck running. Without Tony, 
I don't think I would have been able to do it by myself, not getting it all running and, and all the little fiddly little bits and bobs. So Tony's got a YouTube channel as well. I'm going to put a link to Tony's, Tony's channel down below. Make sure you check him out. He knows absolutely everything about monster trucks. He does painting, engines, welding, everything. He does it all himself. So link to Tony's channel down below. Also, massive thank you to Ian and Claire. Claire for filming and helping out with a couple of little bits and bobs. Ian that's pretty much helped me build the whole entire truck. So check out their YouTube channel, um, Claire's RC. So link to that down below too. Peter from the Thor Monster Truck. He's been on the other end of the phone helping me with so many things with the gearbox and with other little bits and bobs like that. So link to the Thor Monster Truck Facebook group down below. Joshua Yoho, here he works at Monster Jam, um, wrenching on the trucks. He's one of the tech guys down there. He's been giving me so much advice about many, many different things. I'm going to put a link to his Instagram down below. Mikey from V2V just giving me a few tips. It was his idea to do that transmission jack thing that we built. So massive thanks to Mikey from V2V. Link to Mikey's channel down below. Then we got Rick Stephens from PEI. And he's been giving me lots of tips with the wires. The wiring to me is so difficult, so hard. Uh, so massive thanks to Rick uh, from PEI. And actually PEI built me most of the parts for this monster truck. They built the axles, uh, the shocks, and also supplied most of the other parts that got into that build. Also massive thanks to CRD for building the chassis and supplying some of the actual parts. Also shout out to Claude Busted who's also just finished his monster truck build. We've actually been building these roughly at the same time and he just beat me to it finishing it. So check out his channel to see more of that truck. Big shout out to Richard Midget for building an amazing engine. And also Darren from Hydroquip for plumbing up all the hydraulic. Shout out to Craig Stone for helping me with some of the wiring. Vinny and Stempy for helping out in a couple of little pieces. So I just want to say a massive thank you to every single person, no matter how small, how small the little bit of advice was or, or anything like that. I mean, everybody coming together to help me get this dream together and I finally got to drive it and I've got to be the, the happiest kid alive so subscribe and smash the bell so you don't miss any future content you're going to be seeing a lot more of this in the videos very very soon